folks, uh, I'm Dan Summers from Oregon Park Fish and Wildlife, the uh, Roseburg District Office in uh, Douglas County. Uh, today we're going to be going over an instructional video on how to set up and hopefully trap turkeys. Um, and we're going to be going through the whole setup from uh, from tools that we need all the way through, uh, you know, blasting the net and then clean up and all that kind of stuff. So I'd like to start off by uh, like tools required and the parts and pieces of uh, a three rocket um, turkey blast set net system. First thing is your net and here we've got a fairly new three rocket net system and I'll go over later on how it's put away um, but we put it away in a certain system so that it's easy to take out and and, uh, and put away. Here we have our detonator just a nine volt battery and then a galvanometer for, uh, for checking your um, uh, connectivity in the line. Here is a pre-made blast line. Uh, this goes along the, the net and that way you can reuse this every time. Toolbox, it has some random parts and pieces. It's got uh, extra wire, WD-40, uh, tape, some pliers, some wire cutters, wire strippers, um, I like this really thin line. Um, we use this for going from our blast line to our rockets. Um, it's malleable, easy to work with. This is our uh, the other end of the blast line. This will go from, uh, from your very last rocket all the way to wherever you're hiding um, in your blind or in a tree or wherever you may be. And this connects directly to your detonator. Here we've got some examples of our rocket posts. This is what we were using. And it's a very simple design. T-post gets pounded into the ground. Your rocket slides into here. And you've got this is back. And that way when, when the rocket goes against it, it's got something to pry against. Just for example. Got some mud in there. But it should fit directly into this hole just like this. We have this uh, new design that we're trying out for the very first time today. A little beefier, brand new, same design, um, just uh, hopefully a little stouter and it'll last a little longer. All right, and so just a quick comparison of the, of the two different rocket charges or the, or the rockets. Um, this is the old style. It takes the old WMI charges um, the really the only difference is is the size of the ports and the number of ports I believe. Um, the newer ones are the Windstar uh, S200s, um, and like I said, just the ports are a little different. In our truck, so we've got a lock box that is locked to the truck. That's very important, and we've got a non um, friction surface that's important for your truck to ride in. This is locked up, and since this is a training day, we've got way more explosives than we would on a normal day, but we've got a box full of our explosives. And here, WMI type. And Windstar S200s. These are our two different types of blast. These are the old ones. These are the new ones. Depending on whether you're using a three rocket or a five rocket net, you're gonna have a different amount of weights. Uh, a three rocket, um, we've got five weights. You wanna make sure these are nice and heavy and something that you can tie to your net. Um, and then things that are, you're gonna need for setting up generally are just a sledgehammer and a couple of, uh, of mounts. And we'll go on to uh, setting it up. The reason I've selected this location, as you can see, it's, it's grass, and the grass is low, and it's very important, so it's not gonna tangle your net. It's also fairly flat. Uh, if you're, you, you can shoot on, on, on an incline, but the flatter the better. You're gonna get a, a better net layout. Um, another thing you want to look at is you want to look at what your uh, substrate is like. If the ground is too soft, your T-posts aren't going to stick. 
and they're going to fall over and you're not going to get a good blast. Um, another thing you want to really talk with uh, your landowner about is, uh, is there any buried uh, power lines or water lines in this field? Uh, that's something that, you know, if you hit one of those and you're going to have some damage and uh, that's going to look bad on the department. So you want to make sure that you're going around those or avoiding them if you can. All right, so now we're going to go over taking the net out. And like I mentioned earlier, this was put away in a very uh, particular way. Uh, it was piled into the canister so that when we take it out, it'll be relatively ready to go right away. So I'm going to pull this out like so. And as you can see, it comes right out. But as you can see, this was uh, piled in a way that this is our, this is gonna be our back end of the net that is uh, the, the rocket post are gonna be on. And this is what our rockets are gonna be attached to. And it's already piled in a way that it will separate seamlessly. And we'll use bungees and then also the, uh, the net uh, tie downs to help uh, coil the uh, net and keep it organized. Start unwinding this and uh, depending on who you had helping you pick it up because usually we have volunteers out here and the turkey trapper is not the one necessarily doing all the work. So what I like to do is I like to unroll it and I like to make sure that everything is going to open the way that I want. As you can see with this setup, it's looking like right now it might be opened just uh, backwards or inside out, which isn't a problem. All you gotta do is, is flip it. Um, but so you're gonna go down the line and just barely open it. So you're gonna unwrap your line. There we go. So that's how it's supposed to look. Just like that. That's where your weight goes. And open it up. And this way, when this goes off, it's going to open this way. So, just to explain, this is what your weighted line looks like. It's just a simple rope. The end that has the rocket on it is going to have what I like to call a bridle. And it looks kind of like this. And this way it will uh, put the energy out over a uh, more uh, a longer length of net versus than just having one net. So this is what your rocket's going to attach to. So it's going to open this way and there should be five places for your weights. You want to make sure this is still going to open up the way you want. Sometimes you might have to just kind of roll it a little bit. As long as your lines are lining up. And if you're getting, uh, if you're getting dry weather, you can usually set this up. Uh, the day before you trap. Uh, so like I said, usually it's really rainy here. So what we'll do is we'll have a dummy net out here. It's an old net that has a bunch of holes in it and such. And we'll use that to let the turkeys get used to the net. And then we'll come out here um, a couple hours before our trap set. So we'll be in the dark. Um, but we'll be setting this out um, the same day as capture. Just so that we're dealing with a nice dry net. So here you go. So um, if you come down here, Todd, this will be a good example. So as you look down the net, you can see that this line here, which is the one that the rocket attaches to, is in front of and on top of the net. And then this line here, which is in the line, is in top is on top of and behind the net. And this way you know that everything is going when it expands is going to just expand like this. And it should do it with as little effort as, as possible. 
All right, so uh, the first thing that we're going to do when we get to a site, and uh, you can do this all by yourself. It's easier with, with, a, with a volunteer or a helper. And so I've got Emma on the other, other, on the other end, and she has the lead line and the weighted line in the back. And we're just going to try to get these as tight as we can. Um, and what this is going to do is it's just making sure that we're going to place our um, rocket posts in the appropriate spots. Um, if they're off by a little bit, then you may not get a uh, complete straight shoot and your net won't open correctly. So that's what we do first. Next is we're going to place our rocket posts at each one of these bridles. So we have, we have our net stretched out. We've got our bridles opened up and this is gonna tell us where we want our rocket posts. So as you can see in this bridle here, there's three ropes. One's on the very end, one's a little bit further in, and then one is the furthest in. We're gonna take this middle rope and that's gonna be our marker for where our rocket post is gonna be. You wanna go roughly a foot behind the net and what this is gonna, this is gonna give you space for, um, for your debt line, for your weights and all that kind of stuff. Now when you're lining your rocket posts up, you wanna make sure that they're all roughly in line and pointing in the same direction. I can see in this setup that our middle post is forward a little bit, so I would move that back a little bit. But, and you wanna make sure that they're the same angle. Okay, these rocket posts, you can adjust the angle up or down, and so that's another thing you wanna do um, with this design is you wanna make sure that everyone is set exactly the same. And uh, another thing that we like to do a little bit is so we wanna shoot the net that way. But the way the net opens up is we want to pitch it out a little bit on the outside. So I'll just take this and I'll pitch it out just slightly. And what that's going to do is it's going to set our rockets, instead of all three of them go this way, our middle one is going to go straight forward and our out two, our, our outside two are going to go out this way. And that's going to open our net a little bit. If you go too far out, like say I put this out way out this way, what's going to happen is that rocket net is, or that rocket is gonna carry the net out this way and it's gonna reach its maximum potential and then it's gonna shoot back in like this. And then it's gonna close your net a little bit. So you wanna make sure that this isn't canted out too much, but you want it canted just a little bit. And a lot of that just takes um, a little bit of experience to kind of get it out right. And um, that's, that's another reason why we come out on areas like today, just to get a practice before the season starts. All right, so we've got our net laid out. We've got our rocket posts in place where we want them. And uh, our next step is to, we want to put out our blaster line. And so this is what um, goes directly behind the net um, that attaches to our, our uh, detonator. Um, and then we'll have separate wires going from this up to our rockets. But um, this is a 16 gauge lamp cord. You can buy it at just about any hardware store. And the reason you want lamp cord is because it's got two heavy duty uh, cords in there that um, you can do what you want and I'll explain our process. So this here is our blaster end and usually when I roll this up and put it away there will be a toe tag that will say hey this is the blaster end and you want this to be where your blaster is going to be. So in this scenario our turkeys are going to be out here and you want to be thinking of where you want uh, to hide when the turkeys are coming in. We're going to use that outbuilding right over there as our as our hiding spot so that's where we want our blaster so i'm going to send emma on down the line and she's going between the front post and the support post and that just makes sure that everything's going to stay out of the way <laughs> feed these to her and like i said earlier you can usually do this by yourself without any problem so stop right there emma so you can see along this line and i made this plenty long so that uh, it'll fit multiple nets. Um, you'll notice that if you've got several three rocket nets like we do here in Roseburg, not all of them are exactly the same size. And so I had one blaster line last year and I kept having to modify it for different nets. Uh, this line uh, should be plenty long and I left plenty of gap in between each 
um, rocket so that it'll work for every three rocket net that we have. So as you can see, this is what your end should look like in your cord that goes to your rockets. Um, and this goes up and you'll notice on your rockets that there's two shunted lines. This will go to each one of them. And you wanna make sure that each, where, where you make your split down the line to each rocket is on the same cord of the lampshade or of, of the, of the, um, of the lamp cord. And then as you can see, it just goes down here. And then I've got this splice so that makes a complete loop. So um, you got one side that is a straight line going from the blaster and around, and then one line that has the splits in it, and it all makes one big continuous loop. So what you can do for now is you take these and you shunt them. And then this piece right here, we are going to align it with this rocket post right here because we're going to have wire that goes from each one of these up to our rocket. So right about there. So this one, like I said, I left plenty of space in between to accommodate several different nets. It's going to go here. Now I'm going to shunt these together for safety. And then up here, Emma has one more. Shunt these for safety. Another reason to make these longer than you should is over time, your wires are gonna get frayed, they're gonna get wore out and all that kind of stuff, and you're gonna want to cut some off. So you're gonna want a lot of room to play with. All right, so we've got our net, we've got our rocket post, we've got our debt line on the ground. The next thing to do is to put our weights behind our net. And so this is on the back side of our net, and um, we've got these single pigtails like I showed earlier, and on this three rocket net, there's five weights. And so you wanna make sure that um, that this part, the connection in the, in the, um, in the net is secure and it's not frayed, not wearing out or anything. You wanna make sure that your, your rope is in good condition and it's not frayed or ripping. Um, and then you're just gonna simply tie this to your weight. Um, we use these um, big D-rings, whatever you call these. Um, they work really well, they're heavy, and they're, will they're able to slide a little bit, which uh, seems to help the net uh, expand a little better. Um, and you're just looking to put a good knot in this that's not gonna come untied, um, but then again, it's, it's easy and quick to untie later. Um, so that's something to, to look into. And then also you want to make sure that roughly all of your pigtails to your weights are roughly the same length. Cause what's going to happen if they're not is if, uh, if you've got one that's shorter than the others, it's going to be dragging earlier. And then that part of your net might lag. Um, and so that's something that you really want to make sure that, uh, that gets done. Um, Alrighty, so we've got our uh, we've got our net, we've got our blast line, we've got our post, we've got our rockets attached. The next thing that we did, so we brought our uh, our rockets, and they're in our post. Our uh, our post is set to where it's level with the ground, and the reason for this is, as this shoots out of here, this is going to tail up a little bit, so that's going to carry your uh, your net. Um, and this is one of those things, like I mentioned that uh, it kind of takes a little bit of, uh, just a little bit of practice and kind of know how your equipment works. Um, and you want to make sure that everything is, uh, you got a clubbus hook on here, everything's closed, your knots are in good shape. If, uh, if this rocket gets away from the net without any attached, it will go a long ways um, and, uh, and can cause injury. The next thing I like to do is where all of our bridles are. So you can see our line going down uh, our front line is in front and on top and our back line is in back and on top or, or, or behind anyway And I like to make sure that all of these knots that are on the bridle and on the front side of the net Are free of the net because what can happen if this is in here like this even if it's just sitting there Sometimes it can hook a piece of that net and then you might end up with a, just a small uh, portion of bunch net um, And then you're not going to get um, it's not going to open up completely. So that's something that you really want to check <laughs> Now that our net is lined out the way we want it, and we've got everything um, set up, now our turkey trapper is going to start uh, putting our charges inside the rocket. 
these are all just threaded on and you can see on this there's like a little bit of grease and some uh um, stuff to keep it loose and that's that's a really good idea because if you use a rocket um, put it away um, dirty uh, sometimes they, they like to freeze up and then that's going to cause for a really bad morning so as you can see it's fairly easy um, it is nice if you take it after a capture and just try to clean these up as best you can this is a little dirty um, but everything should go off just the way you want it so as you can see so she's going to take this shunted end Show it the shunted, so it's shunted end. And this is so that nothing can get into the wire and um, essentially this, this is safe, um, they're doing this. She's gonna shove that shunted end through any one of these holes. We usually go through the middle um, just because it's the middle, but really it does not matter. All right, so she's pulling that through. As you can see, it's still shunted. Little baggie is gonna go inside our rocket. And then this can get screwed shut. Now, the proper way that these rockets attach to the post is with this tail on top. Now, with some of these new rockets, it kind of seems counterintuitive because the chain is on top as well. And this is something that we're still working out. We might end up moving this weld to the bottom if we think that might fly better. But um, this is the way it's supposed to be. And as you can say, see, this is our this is our outside rocket. And so we have this one canted a little bit out. Um, and that should help us open up our net properly. All right, so now we have we have rockets, uh, or we have we have charges in every single one of our rockets, um, but everything is still shunted, so it's uh, technically still safe. The next thing is gonna be for the uh, the job of the turkey trapper to go through and check everything before um, before they wire up the rocket. So um, so first off right here, so it's, it's bright and early in the morning, it's dark out, and I got a lot of volunteers helping me, and uh, I notice some things when I'm doing my check through. So look, this here is wrapped around, that will not work. Gotta fix that, make sure that it's gonna fly right. If, it, if you got, obviously if you've got rope or part of your rocket wrapped around your post, it's not gonna fly right. Nothing I notice here, this can be a disaster. Your weights are gonna drag when the rockets go off. So you wanna make sure that your weights aren't gonna catch on anything when they go off. And that includes the wire, that also includes your post. So usually what I'll do is I'll move this forward just a little bit. Make sure that nothing's gonna get tangled when it goes off. And I'll just leave this right here so that it can pull it directly forward and not hit anything. And I'll do that everything all the way down the line. So now that everything's ready to go, uh, we are ready to unshunt our wires and wire up our rockets. Now, this is where it, it's potentially dangerous. So you wanna make sure that nobody is going to be in front of your net after this point forward. And the turkey trapper should be the only one in the area uh, when this is going on. So anyway, so now you can see she's going to be unshunting the wires. So this is uh, shunted up in there. So she's gonna take that out. You can see there's two wires. She's gonna separate those two wires. And it's also very important at this time that you wanna make sure that there's no um, static electricity or anything like that. And if you're wearing certain types of clothing, that can um, be a problem. But anyway, so she's gonna take that and she's going to use, she can either wire it up directly if you have enough wire here, or you can use some of this wire, which I mentioned earlier in our kit um, if you don't have enough wire, um, but this is cheap, it's malleable, it's really easy to work with, and you can use this to go directly from your rocket down to your line, and this way it'll save your uh, your lamp your lamp cord. Um, and so we're going to go ahead and do that um, for every single rocket.
Good, so this is what one of your rocket sets should look like. You got your line coming out of your rocket, connected to your blaster wire, two separate lines, and each one of these goes down to your lamp cord. We're gonna do this on all three rockets on a three rocket net. Cool. All right, so we've got our blast line on the ground behind the net, um, and all of our rockets are wired up. Everything is unshunted, and this is dangerous. So uh, the next step is these are the wires that are going to attach to your uh, to your blast line that goes to your detonator. So we like to take our there you go. There's our blast line. We're going to unroll that. Um, the next thing we're going to do is we're going to take our galvanometer and we're going to test this right here close to the rockets. And this way, if there is a bad connection, it uh, can really narrow it down versus is if we had this all connected and we tested it at the far end, then there's just one more connection that you have to wonder about. So uh, we like to test it here and then connect our, uh, our line and then test it again at the, at the other end. So that's what she's going to do right here. And on your uh, galvanometer, you're looking for at least 15 um, on your galvanometer in order to get a good connection. Um, you can probably get away with less than that, but that's what I like to go for. Um, because as you add more line to that, you're going to get a smaller value. Cool. All right. So now, um, for, uh, for this demonstration, this is where our tricky trapper is going to be hiding. Um, to catch the turkeys. Uh, obviously this is not a very good hiding spot, but um, from at this location, this is where your, your detonator is going to attach to your shot line. So uh, what we're gonna do, again, we're gonna, we're gonna test our, our connectivity again with our galvanometer. There you go, so right there you can see we've got about 23 um, which, is a, which is a very high value, which means we have very good connectivity throughout our line. If we have a low value or say a zero, um, that means that you've got a break in your line and you're not making a connection and uh, you're not gonna get a full loop of current through your charges and, and you're not, you're, it's not gonna go off. So that's very important to get as high of a value as possible. connect our blaster to our shot line. So we're gonna shove this through that little line there. You can kind of just tuck that over and this screws down and this is gonna keep your connection tight. And you're gonna do that on both leads. All right, so we're here, uh, we got everything set up. Uh, we're out here, we already checked our connectivity. We got our blaster set up. And at this time, the turkey trapper will be waiting, um, watching the turkeys come in and feed. Um, you wanna get the turkeys to where the majority of them are inside all the posts or within, within the, the outside posts. and uh, you want to wait until heads down and feeding and then turkey trapper uh, at that point is going to either say to themselves or to the people that are in the vehicle with them they're going to say charging and they're going to push that button this light is going to come on at the same time you push fire charging firing now All right, so after the blast, you can see how it opened up. It's actually opened up very well. You got a nice square, and in theory, if all the turkeys were within the first five feet of the, of the rockets, uh, you'd catch 100% um, of your birds. Uh, the next thing is, so like after uh, all your birds are worked up and uh, they're in boxes and you've got your volunteers, uh, you, uh, you wanna stretch your net back out and pull it into a clean area 
get your uh, get all the turkey feathers and leaves and sticks and all that kind of stuff picked out of your net, and then you want to start bunching. Um, the first thing that you do, so once you once you get drugged, dragged to a clean area and picked clean, um, you want to remove your rockets from your net. And the way I do it is the clebis always lives with the rocket, and this way. Um, because you're not using the same net every time um, in most situations. So this way, your rocket always has a clebis attached. Once all of your rockets are uh, detached, um, you can start bunching the net. And we'll go over that next. So the main thing you're looking for here is you want to make sure the net is piled so that when it opens, uh, it's not going to snag on itself. Um, just like when we opened it, you want this line in the back and on bottom, essentially, and this line in the front and on top. And that way, when it opens, it's going to spread. Um, and then from there, we uh, take it and we pile it, or, or we'll, we'll tie it up so that it stays that way, and then we'll pile that in our barrel. Um, and that's that's just one method of storing our nets um, Here in Western Oregon when we get back to the office We take it out of the barrel spread it out in the shop Make sure it's picked clean and dried before we put it away and it's ready for our next capture